In the bel canto tradition, there is something that many teachers use known as the vakai. Okay, Vakai, V-A-C-C-A-I, is the last name. Nicolo Vakai was the uh, composer, um, and he, he basically set little tiny Italian poems to these mini songs. Um, and so these are sort of standard, in, not only in the bel canto world, but in, in Italianate training in general. These are used quite often. But originally, um, for example, this exercise was written somewhere in the, the realm of 1833. They're quite old. Um, at that time, English-speaking people, say from England, were going to Italy wanting to learn how to sing. But the process of learning how to sing that an Italian would go through was, you know, they may be doing vocal exercises on an A ah or a vowel for years, and English speakers had no, especially wealthy English speakers, had really no interest in that kind of investment of time. So these were written originally as a way to teach singing um, in a quick way, if that makes sense. So this is actually the first exercise in a series of exercises that goes through all the different interval patterns. So this one is the scale pattern, the next one is thirds, then there's fourths and fifths and sixths and sevenths and octaves, and then they get into things like appoggiatura and uh, a, a chacotura, which are the little tiny different types of grace notes, mm -hmm. so different types of running patterns. So you actually could go through the whole book and learn all the different aspects of singing. Okay. <clears throat> now, the reason this one is so important to me is because I really believe that I had my biggest breakthroughs with my voice going from amateur to professional on this one exercise. And, and the reason that that happened is I, first of all, was, was taught the exercise by my teacher. I was told to go home and memorize the exercise, which I did. I would sing this in the shower regularly. Um, I learned it in the Italian, and then one day he said, I want you to take all the consonants off and just sing it on the Italian vowels, which I did. So I knew it so well that I could kind of play with it. Mm -hmm. And the next part of the adventure was essentially recognizing that when we're in different parts of our range, mm -hmm. our vowel actually changes. Mm -hmm. So an A, ah, when we're singing on a G below middle C, an A ah on a D or an A ah on a C1 may be three different A's in our vocal production. But in Italian, there's only one A. Ah. A. Ah. And, and, and the only reason why I know exactly where that is in my body is because I practice it so many times. But in this exercise, after I'd memorized it, after I'd learned it in Italian, after I'd taken the thing off and I'd only sung it on the Italian vowels, basically what I did is I focused my attention on every vowel. And I started with ah and made sure that every ah that I was singing throughout the entire exercise was ah and not a variation. Mm -hmm. And not ah, 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 ah. <coughs> it was all ah. Then I go through and I checked and every a was a. Not a, 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 a. It was a. E, mm -hmm. e. O, o, u, u. And I would separate. So when I'd sing it through the first time, I'd focus only on my on my ahs. I make sure every ah was the same. Mm -hmm. Then the next time I go through and I make sure every o oh was the same. And then I'd check on my a. And then I but does that like that. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was able to be conscientious enough to check every vowel that it was exactly the same vocal production no matter what note I was singing in my range. And the day that that happened, I sang it with such ease that I went, oh my god, it's the vowels. Mm -hmm. The entire key to singing with ease is the vowel. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the definition of singing, it says right there, the definition is elongated vowels. Mm -hmm. So it's just what vowel are we actually using and on. And if we are from different parts of this country, we have our dialects, we have our regionalisms. You know, if you're from the South, you talk a little different than you talk when you're from the North or you're from Boston or you're from New York. Or those, those dialect things affect how we sing. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we kind of get into our minds that how we speak is related to how we sing, it, we can start to be less, less personal and less emotional about, oh, I can't sing because I'm not comfortable or somebody told me I can't sing or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm writing that book, so you think you can't sing because I believe everybody can. But I also believe that some people have to work a little harder to get rid of 
vocal speech related issues that impact the voice negatively.